um, night, mysterious night sky thrilled the ancient Greek astrologers who played a huge role in what we now know today and the shape of the size of the earth. So actually, there's the mythos of Greece and then there's the philosophers of Greece and then there are the astronomer and astrologers of Greece. You know that I'm into astrology. But the history of astrology is fascinating because it actually is all based on Greek mythology. So everything that you look at, okay, so you have Mars, you know, the god of war in your chart. Now I told you it went back all the way back to the Babylonian times, right? So this is Wikipedia here. Um, but the Hellenistic Egyptian uh, astrology and then the Greek and Rome mythology, astrology and astronomy because actually astrology created astronomy, believe it or not. It didn't go the other way. It was the mythos that created the science. It's the mythology that created the science because the mythology was based on science, but it was more abstract. School of Athens, everybody's familiar with this, right? That's because what is the Renaissance? What does Renaissance mean? Does anybody know? Yeah, it's the rebirth. Yes, thank you. And um, yeah, so the Renaissance, of course, you're from Paris, right? Where are you from? Netherlands. Netherlands, okay. Most people in other countries know more about like art history than we do in America, just because it's kind of. So not that popular in school. But anyway, so the School of Athens is Italian Renaissance painting, and these are all the Greek philosophers. That's what this painting is about, if you didn't know. So they were obsessed with Greece and Rome, but mostly Greece, mostly Greece. And that's because literally Renaissance means rebirth. And that's why the Renaissance statues look like the Greek statues, because they actually, that to them was their, their history, their past. And so they were obsessed with it, okay? And that's most of the paintings that aren't uh, Christian-based or for the church, they're either church or they're fan art for Greek mythology. There's three main Greek uh, philosophers that you actually have to know, or else I wouldn't say you've had a good education. Um, that's Plato, Socrates, and Aristotle, and I'm sure you already know them a little bit. Okay. We're gonna go back to all of these subjects I'm touching on right now. There is a lot of misogyny in Greece, okay? So this is, we're in the patriarchy now, all right? The matriarchy is over, and it doesn't come back in the Central European-centered viewpoint until the turn of the century, when women get the right to vote in like 1928. So a long time, okay? We're in a, we are definitely in a patriarchy now. Um, and I have an article about that. But basically, women don't have rights. In fact, they're slaves. But there are a, a, um, a couple important women that are become philosophers, but they're not written about. There's also women who are priests, because there's paintings of them on the wall. But they were forgotten in history, I'd say, on purpose. So it's not that they don't exist, and it's not like women artists don't exist when you look through the historical canyon. They're there. They're not spoken about. Okay, they're not spoken about. So you actually have to dig quite deep to find them, and there are people who spend their whole lives with them. That's what they're. Okay, then we're going to talk a little bit about Library of Alexandria. The Library of Alexandria, who's heard of it? Okay, beautiful. We're going to watch a little CGI video on it because it's actually quite fun. Um, there's a lot of uh, video games, if you're, a, if you're into video games, any of you, of the Library of Alexandria. And there's CGI, amazing CGI. So basically, it was the last significant library on Earth that acted as a respiratory for recording what was known about the universal laws and hermeticism. So hermeticism, you probably don't know that word, that's basically everything that um, when the Crusades came, wiped out. Okay, so that would be things like astrology or um, even actually science, anything scientific that has in some sort of metaphysical relationship, which is pretty much everything, because that would be geometry and everything else. 
So basically from the beginning of history, we've been recording things and that any ship that sailed by, it was in Egypt. It, it's like the last part of Egypt and the beginning of Greece. Any ship that sailed by or, or any travelers that came through, they would either by force or by um, asking them, take any books they had, any books, and they would record them in scrolls. And so this is a massive library full of everything recorded. So like if you were coming from Japan, you know, and you had any scrolls or books or knowledge which they carried around in their boats, then it would be copied and stored at the Library of Alexandria. And the Library of Alexandria was destroyed, completely destroyed. And there is uh, theories about what would have happened if it wasn't destroyed because we have everything from there. We have astronomy and science and math and medicine. Everything is recorded in this library. Who destroyed it? Who destroyed it? Well, there's a couple of things that did destroy it. It was a lot of different wars. And at the end of the, the last one, to, like it kept getting destroyed, and then the last thing was this massive fire. And nobody knows the reason for the fire. Like it's highly suspicious, but 